Welcome back to Progressive Talk, episode number seven. Reboost his campaign. <laughs> yeah, it's like a reboot. Uh, it, check out this Forbes title. This was this was a Forbes headline. Quote: Beto's town hall drags down CNN's ratings down oh. to thirty percent. Oh, so, oh, that's gonna hurt. That's, that's, that's gonna sting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It didn't work. I, I actually, I, I mean, I thought Beto was a lot sharper and more prepared, mm-hmm. but he wasn't winning me or anyone over. Like he's already kind of shown his hand to us that he's right. a corporatist, that he takes corporate money, uh, that he's you know he keeps bringing up this Medicare for America. It's just like, no, dude, it's Medicare for all. Or get out of here. He, he oh, just yeah. keeps doubling down, and yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you, because I saw a segment, this lady uh, was asking him about her medication. He just spewed out this really long, indirect answer that most centrists like him do. Like, they don't answer the question, they relitigate the question, they kind of like, uh, just spew out paragraphs. And that's kind of what he did. He knows he should be supporting medication care for all and he's not doing it he's bought mm. by the corporations and it was just he was pathetic mm. so any highlights anything positive come from that do you think no nope, not on this end uh the only thing i noticed he did seem sharper he did seem like it was a reboot you can tell he rebooted something in his mm. delivery uh in his awareness mm. in his responses mm. uh he was uh, even had a suit on, like, like he really looked revamped. Okay. Uh, but it was the same old thing, just uh, so I couldn't pull out a highlight if I tried. So, Dave, what are your thoughts about why we are in the pickle that we're in? I mean, why do we keep bringing out these paper-thin corporate sellouts? I mean, why is so much of Congress inundated with that? Short of Citizens United, I mean, what, what can be done about this? I mean, is it – what's the answer here? What, when you're, what, what would you – what's the remedy here? It has to be money. I, I, I don't know. I, I, what is the diagnosis? Like, it just has to be about money if you're asking for the diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, I did. I pretty much thought that. Mm. So, what's the remedy here? Well, do you have any suggestions? I mean, short answer: the remedy is the people uh, to show up and vote for progressive candidates. Um, if you want to get into numbers about, you know, how we're not voting, uh, how millennials have the largest voting block right now at eighty million. Uh, we need to talk about the remedy, and the remedy is voting, getting people to vote. But they're not going to show up for these people you're talking about, these corporate centrists, uh, the, these totally bought people. And, and in 2016, 80% of millennials did not show up to vote. So it's like if these people keep showing up, these Joe Bidens, these Beto O'Rourke's, these Kamala Harris's, they're, they're not going to show up. And it's sad because 80 million people – can make a difference, mm-hmm. okay? It's just, it's just sad to know that, but they're, they're not going to come out for him. We have to get a Bernie Sanders in there. We have to get a Tulsi Gabbard in there, a Mike Gravel, Marianne Williamson, maybe Andrew Yang, um, somebody who's and somebody who is transformative in some way, in just some way. It doesn't have to be all the way, just in some way. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I'm just thinking about the way everything is transpiring, uh, how it's all coming together. You know, um, you've got 20 something candidates, so they're flooding the field, likely purposely, to take it to the second round. Super delegates will likely go for the centrist. I agree with you that we're not motivated. 
you know, people in the millennial generation, X, Y, Z, they're not motivated because we right. don't we don't have candidates that the Democratic Party supports. In fact, they shun them. But that creates a dilemma because the centrists know that they know that we're not going to come out to vote if we put a centrist up. And they know that those over the age of 50 will vote for the centrist. So they've got it in the bag, in their minds, right? They got it in the bag because they know if they run a centrist, the older generations will come out to vote. Younger generations will stay home. So no matter how you you cook. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why would we understand? undermine ourselves in that way um it sounds so, it so comes, dire it sounds conspiratorial it, it, in a way well it's strange, like living in, an, in a bubble where you have people that live according to the way they think in their generation and they think that's what got them ahead and they think that's what's best for their children and their gan- grandchildren and you guys are too young you don't know better let us show you the way you know we've got it all under control. We need to maintain power because you guys are going to come along and mess it all up. So basically what you're saying is like they, they think they know, they look at us like children, like, oh, we know what's best for you. We know the centrist, the more centrist candidate is best for you. I know you guys are pie in the sky progressives. You want all these things, these handouts and whatnot, but we know what's best for you. Is that kind of like what you're getting? Yes. Yeah, so I don't think it's all like, I don't think that they are setting up there purposely trying to um like I, I don't think that they believe they're coming from a deal with t- intent is what i'm saying i think they really okay. believe they're coming from a good intention uh but they think the ends justify you know justify the means they really believe okay. that smearing bernie sanders tulsi gabber whoever comes along like that is fo- is it's like giving a kid a you know a whooping you know <laughs> you know that's kind of the way their mindset is so, um, okay. they just so believe like in the, ca- they believe in the best for us, right? Cause they believe in the capitalistic model. Uh, it's what got them where they are. They had to work hard for it. Uh, they, they're the ones that put food, you know, clothes on your back, food on the table for you. This is the real world. This is how it is. You know, you need to wake up. You're living in a sleep, you know? Um, yeah. So that's kind of what I think is going on. It's pathetic. Um, it's why but, it's why Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer need primary in 2020. Now, here's the thing that I want to ask you, Dave, is, OK, so the right is really, really good at drawing crowds uh, in the in the X, Y, Z generation. You know, they know how to do it, you know, from the Jordan Petersons to the Ben Shapiro's to the Stephen Crowder's. Now that they got this 13 year old girl that they're putting up there. Uh, did you hear about that? Thirteen-year-old now? Well, it's shocker. <laughs> yeah, she's like a sensation on YouTube now, uh, on the alt right. Um, she's the newest far right, oh, foul mouth, red peeling star, and she's only fourteen. And so what she does is she she brings out all of the typical hate spewing, right wing talking points, and it's supposed to be cute because she's just fourteen years old, you know. Um, uh. She's supposed to be above and beyond her intellect for her age, uh, but there's a lot of suspicion that she's just being spoon-fed what to say. But yeah. Um, but anyway, getting back to the question. So what is it about the left that doesn't have that same kind of synergy where we're able to draw in lots and lots of people? Hmm. Or do you disagree with that assessment? I honestly think, like, to a degree, we're, we're just in our heads more. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're wrapped up in our own theories and our own cliques and our own ways of thinking. I don't know. That's a good question. Well, what's your theory? I think we're too puritanical. Uh, okay. I think that we're so, you know, like how they always sell moralism on the right. You know, what's moralistic, what's ethical, you know, what Bible says or what the Quran says, etc. Not the Quran. Scratch that. <laughs> the right way, except the Quran. Or the Bible, at least. And, it's almost uh, the same thing, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. Don't, you can't tell them same that. Same ideas. Though. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't tell them too much. It might freak them out. Um, puritanical, it sounds like. Puritanical, weird. right. It's, it's where, you're right, we live in our head, but at the same time, no matter what anyone does, we've got to criticize it. You know, okay. they have to be perfect. You know, Bernie Sanders didn't m mention Julian Assange. I'm not voting for him. Andrew Yang isn't talking enough about Social Security. I'm done with him. You know, so when it comes right down to it, I would rather vote for Trump than I would for Andrew Yang. When they're like day and night. Yeah. And clearly, Andrew Yang is much closer to Bernie Sanders than he ever would be to, to Bernie Sanders. Right, um, yeah. And somehow, subconsciously, we're the ones that are unwilling to get in the mud. You know, we're the ones unwilling to be dirty, you know, and play the dirty politics. I don't know. Is it yeah. is it is that our uh, is that our undoing? You know, like, are we literally destroying? We're going about the wrong way. Let me ask you that way. We're going about it in a way that we think makes us smell like flowers in the end, while the entire world around us is essentially just falling apart. I don't know. I, I just see people, a lot of people with a lot of moral integrity uh, and political integrity who don't want to compromise their values or it's all or nothing thinking, like they all have to be this or nothing, or they have to be this, or oh, screw it, it's Trump. So it's just, man, do you, it's do kind you of mind-boggling. Yeah, do you really feel that wins the day? I mean, in the world that we live in. If you look at historically, do you feel that always being high-minded, uh, always being principled to the T wins the day. Do you really, do you really think that in the end of, end of it, does it, it wins the day? Yeah. I mean, I still think princi being principled is a good thing though. So that's, that's the thing here. Like when people say I'm not going to vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016 and I'm voting for Jill Stein, I, I know what that means. That's you're okay. being uh, true to yourself. Okay. Um, and shouldn't we be endorsing that? Shouldn't that be like a standard? Yeah. Like oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's apples and oranges, though, in my mind. Like the difference between okay. Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders is so insignificant compared to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting okay. that we go all, completely over to the dark side, but I also think that we need to live in realism. You know, that there there is a place where you have to wake up and say, you know, if you're going to get into the boxing, you know, what do you call that? The boxing ring, then you're going to have to throw some punches. And some of them are have to, you know, be left handed and, and unexpected hooks and they're going to have to be dirty. Right, right. Yeah. No, play dirtier. <laughs> play, fight to win. Uh, be in this to win it, uh, you know. Yeah, but. More importantly is understand the difference between apples and oranges, you know, Hillary Clinton versus Bernie, you know, that's apples, you know, and Bernie versus yeah. Yang, that's that's oranges, right? So sure, sure. Um, how do how can we grow the vote? How can we grow the vote? How can we attract people to the left? Hmm. Maybe being less uh, intellectual, uh, less um, high and mighty, uh, less uh, less know-it-alls. Uh, a lot of know-it-alls on the left. I don't. I don't know. I, th I think presentation and is is keen too. Think about why right wingers lean towards Bernie. Uh, how one in ten. Uh, Trump voters were going to vote for Bernie if he got the nomination in 2016. Why is that? What does he do? What's Bernie doing right that's attracting right wingers? You know. Well, for one, he doesn't focus on. He does. He does bring out the left occasionally, but most of everything he brings out is not about the left. It's about the right. He calls them out. You know, he doesn't make it into a right and left thing though. But he calls out the actual problems. You know. Okay. Um, is he a straight shooter? Yeah, I think he's a straight shooter. He's, you know, he's authentic. He's a straight shooter. He's principled to a point. He was willing to endorse Hillary Clinton. I, you know, where people see that as a flaw, I don't see it as a flaw because I see, I don't it, see it either. I see that his strategizing, 
Yeah, that that was completely within the context of beating Donald Trump and no other context there. That wasn't right. Bernie giving up on his values. That was Bernie saying, OK, I'm going to do the best I can to beat Donald Trump. How do I do that? The calculation was to support Hillary. It had to kill him. It couldn't have been something he was so overtly excited about. It's something mm -hmm. he had to do. And sometimes in politics, you have to take those punches and just you know bite your tongue and do the right thing and right. even wow. i also think it boils down to trust uh i think the left is a lot less trusting of their candidates than is the right i think the right is willing to suspend their doubt just to make sure that their candidate gets elected and even if that candidate only you know puts in 30 percent of what they said on the campaign trail it's 30 percent Mm -hmm. They have a lot better than, you know, we're wanting 100% because we want 100%. We never get anyone in because no one's perfect. And so we get zero. Right. They get Trump. He holds 30% of what he promises up and they get 30% and they keep chipping away. And then their next election comes along. We do the same thing. He gets 30% more. That's 60%. Next election comes along. 30% more. Then it's 90%. That's what I mean. I just think the approach the left is taking is not working, and we need to re-strategize. How many times have you heard it? Yeah, no, I agree. Like, how many times have you heard it, though? The left eats itself, so it's kind of like mm -hmm. we, do that, we do that like clockwork. We drop each other just like that. Like, we just, like, if you don't ideologically align with me perfectly, screw you, screw your network, uh, screw everything you have to say because of X, Y, or Z. And, you know, maybe we shouldn't be like that. I don't know, you know. I do think that there's a, there is a, it's a balancing act, you know. Uh, so there needs to be some loyalties, but not selling yourself out. That's a fine line, you know, balancing those two. Sure. And the loyalties shouldn't go to a uh, Popular, you know, it shouldn't be based on um, what do you call that when you're focusing idolizing a, a candidate like idealizing. Andrew Yang. Yeah, Andrew Yang or nothing. Bernie Sanders or no one. You know, uh, right. The right is willing. If 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 uh, let's say Marco Rubio won in 2016, they would have run behind him. Not one would have dropped supporting him, supporting the Republican He's nominee. Every one of Absolutely. them would have lined up behind them. Boom, 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 like that. Now, if it had been John Kasich, then some of them might have said, you know, this is too much. It's turning my stomach. Uh, but the point here is we've got to be more um, granule in, in, in the way we're approaching these candidates. We can't just jump the, the wagon because, you know, well, Andrew, you didn't get it. I'm done. I'm done with you. You know, You're right, right. So, yeah. uh, what, what this brings up the the the, the, the words litmus tests like like mm -hmm. Medicare for all is, is supposedly a litmus test for the left in picking a candidate for twenty twenty. Um, they have to support Medicare, uh, and if like if they don't, and I'm kind of like this, I, and I'm kind of guilty of uh, you know doing that without which I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but I just do it because. I believe Medicare for all needs to happen 100%. And the Sanders bill too, which, you know, who's supporting that but Bernie at this point? Do you know anyone supporting it besides Bernie? Not the way he's, you know, like he's 100%. Yeah, Booker and, and Harris and Gillibrand, I think they said they signed on, but that's that's just political calculations to make yeah. them seem more progressive. That's my well, opinion. Okay, let me let me just put it in the, this way. This is the way I'm, I'm looking at it. What I'm seeing okay. is that the left gets too caught up on policies. And uh, Pete Buttigieg might be on to something. Now, I'm not saying we completely go all the way over to Pete Buttigieg's way of thinking, but I do think he might be no. on to something. And what okay. I think it is, is we're losing sight of the general picture. And it has to be guided by strategy. We're opting for policies and losing strategy. You know, somewhere we've lost our way. You know, like, I feel like 
I agree. We need to be principled. Of course, we want Medicare for all. Of course, we want UBI. Of course, we want all these things that are considered progressive in nature. Absolutely. But sure. not at the expense of the strategy. And not it's not that the, the strategy isn't to win. OK, that's not that's not the ultimate strategy. I know that's probably right away what you know someone might think that's what I'm saying. Mm. But the strategy is how to win the hearts and minds of the people. Because if we can't do that, it doesn't matter if Andrew Yang comes along. It doesn't matter if there's a Bernie Sanders. I mean, these these guys are once in a lifetime candidates. Tulsi Gabbard, mm -hmm. Andrew Yang, you know, Bernie Sanders. I mean, how many times do these kind of candidates come along? And now what's happening? We're going to likely go into our little camps and, you know, I'm going to vote for it's Bernie. Lifetime, I'm going to vote for Yang. I'm going to vote for Tulsi. I'm, I, I am not going to vote for Yang if, if Tulsi doesn't get it. I'm not going to vote for Yang if Bernie doesn't get it and vice versa. You know, we're losing sight of the strategy here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we need to, it's a sharp, it's a sharp turn when we say those things and we need to soften that approach mm -hmm. and look at the large picture. Well, we're becoming- uh, uh, And not just be so black and white. Yeah, we're becoming exclusive instead of inclusive. You know, we're like, this is my camp, you either join mine or you're blind and stupid, you know? And yeah. it's like there's no cohesiveness, you know, it's camp, it's camp, it's like a camp mentality. And yeah. uh, so I think if we, we can't come together, it's going to be a centrist that's going to get nominated. And then it's going to be, it's going to be Donald Trump. <laughs> you know? And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to have, um, what's her name, Ginsburg? She will likely yeah. pass away. She'll be replaced. Clarence Thomas will probably retire, so Trump can get someone in younger. Uh, Bayer is not very young either. I think he's in his 70s. So what you're going to see is about six or seven out of the court justices will be conservative. And everything that we work for will be overturned. You will never see Citizens yep. United be overturned. Uh, Same-sex marriage will be overturned. Abortion rights will be overturned. Workers' rights will be overturned. They'll probably attempt to get rid of Social Security, uh, minimum wage, 40-hour work week. They want to undermine all of it. That's what they want. Yeah. They want a libertarian, religio-fascist society. <laughs> That's what they no, want. No, you're right. It, it's scary, man. It's really scary. So anyway, I sound so negative. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, no, but that's all good, man. Get it out. <laughs> but there might be one possible um, ray of light here, and that is what's called the national popular vote. Have you heard of that? Uh, yeah, Nevada just became the, the, the latest state to pass this, I believe, uh, right. bringing up the grand total to 195 electoral votes. Uh, mm -hmm. How many is needed to, to make the popular vote the new... Uh, status quo here. 270. And the governor, Steve Cisolek, I think it's called Cisolek, out of Nevada, has to sign on to it, but he likely will. That will become the Is 16th. he a Democrat? He's a Democrat. So if Nevada okay. joins on, it'll be the 16th jurisdiction to join the compact. Okay. Uh, but essentially, the national popular vote would allow whoever gets a popular vote to um, that state's electorals will go to that candidate. It's about time. I say do it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to pick up some states, though, for sure. Have you heard the latest on Julian Assange? Like, I think he was... I think it was 17 arrested. convictions. He was, yeah, he was indicted for leaking U.S. government secret documents. The allegations they aided and abetted former Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning's efforts to leak classified documents to the anti-secrecy group and committed a crime by publishing them on the internet. Doesn't that infringe on free speech and freedom, freedom of the press? Yeah, I mean, he's a journalist, right? I mean, shouldn't he be... Per aren't there a certain set of protections for journalists? I mean, he's not an American citizen, so I don't know how applicable that is. But, yeah, uh, I think it's under freedom of the press, isn't it? The, the amendment. It says aiding and abetting. Now, I heard some say that he assisted Chelsea Manning into hacking. That's a criminal violation. He's not a U.S. citizen. Sounds like there's a crime in there somewhere they're going to sift out. So uh, they're going to nail him for something. 
Yeah, uh, it's going to set an ugly precedent for journalists in America because where is it going to go from there? Um, do American journalists have to be uh, letting us know what's going on in the world that our government is up to? And, you know, where's it going to go? Yeah. Yeah, this is just scary stuff, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it is. Because I don't know if you saw the smear of Tulsi Gabbard and Nico House from Huffington Post did a uh, hit piece on them. Both of them. Essentially, it says Nico House, who won the Hawaii Democrats' recent donor challenge, also believes Bill Cosby was framed and that Pizzagate is real. Telsey Gabbard is set to have lunch with a prolific conspiracy theorist who argues the mass shootings in Las Vegas was an intelligence operation, guilt by association. The stretch. It says. Right. The Gabbard, while struggling to register in most polls, have attracted a good deal of her support from the fringe, both the left and the right. Even KKK Framing. leader David Duke tweeted his support. You know, he, he no longer is part of the KKK, but, you know, guilt by association again. And everyone, it, the campaign has, however, embraced some of its lesser hinge fans. I guess that, that means we're the lesser hinge fans. But if you couple this with how they're deplatforming Anything that doesn't fit into the narrative and the Russiagate and the McCar neo McCarthyism and then Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, it's really an attempt by the deep state to shut down anything that doesn't fit into the narrative and to go after people, you know, start with smearing them uh, and then eventually find ways to frame them and some of them get jailed. Yeah, and that's probably the next step uh, when they set the precedent with Julian Assange, it can go after you know, uh, uh, journalists on home soil here at their disposal if they wanted to. I mean, it's scary stuff, man. And Donald Trump had gone on the campaign trail but, talking about how free speech was being eroded, freedom of the press was being eroded, and he's been coming out now ever since he's been president. He's fake news this and fake news that, and unless it's Fox News, which is, you know, essentially, you know, Murdoch uh, network. Trump gets validated more, though, uh, than we, than I would probably like to see. Uh, when I hear these these articles, I just read an article. Was it? It was in Fortune magazine. Uh, Joe Biden, the most progressive uh, in the field of 2020 candidates. Now, see when that <laughs> every time I read that that headline, because I've seen that on the Hill, I've seen it on uh, Fortune, and a couple of Trump. Trump gets validated when he says that, that there's fake news out there because that's obvious. Mm -hmm. establishment candidate and it's disgusting man you know call me a conspiracy theorist but it reminds me of well it makes me think of triangulation you know and controlled and then people get banned and then they start setting president and they ratchet up the president and then WikiLeaks gets shut down. You know, remember when he said that I have nothing to do with WikiLeaks, uh, where on the campaign trail he said he loves WikiLeaks? Yeah, he said we have to help. Times. Right. I think that if people can see that he is the right wing of the same bird, and the left wing is, you know, MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, all of those people, Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just a uh, boils down to a chess game for them. Were their pawns? Totally, yeah. You know, and they pat each other on the back. Well, you, it looks like you won the chess game, old Joe. Well, it looks like you won the chess game, old Don. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. I Anyways. know I keep coming back to this, Dave. I mean, I sound really negative. What do we do? What do we do? Keep making videos, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep making our videos. It's, a, it's all we can do. We just give people the truth, give them honest opinions, give them uh, facts, give them what what mainstream media does not want people to know, uh, which is just the truth uh, or just anything that's outside of the box. It's just about getting the word out. That's all we can do. That's all I have control over here is, is, is the information I get out. Um, you know, we don't have that much control. Um, people are going to believe things one way or the other, but the best that I can do and that you can do is, is put the information out there uh, and hopefully people, uh, 
you know, take our considerations. You're right. We can, we can go door to door and slap them in the face if you want. Like it's take a tickle. Anything else? Okay. Well, I see. Uh, um, what's on the list? Uh, you mentioned something about. Uh, Yang's uh, lack of social security and, and welfare knowledge. Can you elaborate a little on that? Yeah, definitely. Like his other policies, like the democracy dollars, ranked choice voting, wanted, wanting to overturn Citizens United, he's uh, wanting to uh, carbon capture. You know, all these are great ideas, and they're definitely progressive in nature. Um, but let's just for a moment imagine he didn't have UBI, and he was running on everything else. And he was lacking in social security, he was lacking in social welfare programs, lacking in the various taxes systems that progressives often talk about. You know, how much would that change your support of him as a candidate? But it's just a thought exercise. I mean, it probably doesn't mean much because, well, he is bringing out UBI, you know, yeah. you know so. I, I see. And I do think his UBI is very strong. I, I don't think it's the strongest it could be. But I, th I think it's, you know, it will it'll be transformative. Definitely will be transformative and set us, set us, setting us on a right path for the future. So, yeah, economic rights. Yeah. I think at some point what I'll do is, Dave, is I'll email his campaign or maybe you and I can do that if you want to join in. Uh, OK. And ask him about some of those points that we just talked about, which I really think are not helping him. to OK, yeah. You know, certain groups of people. Like sometimes I'll have uh, videos or like impromptu videos, uh, kind of being like a rogue strategist for Andrew Yang, hoping that mm -hmm. like one of his people sees it. <laughs> like, I don't know, that's, that's kind of maybe that's too. Out yeah, of the I think box. we have to be a little more direct. Maybe you need to go a little more direct to the source. You know, uh, email his campaign. Yeah, I, I hear you definitely. He seems to be one of the more receptive candidates out there. So overall, Dave, what do you think? Do you think that uh, you know? Do, the fact that they're coming out doing all of this means that they know they're threatened, right? I mean, the fact that, you know, they're doing all these smears, smear attempts against Bernie, against Tulsi, doesn't that indicate they believe that the electoral system is enough intact that we could take over? Otherwise, they wouldn't waste their time, right? If we weren't a threat, why would they, why would these uh, be so vicious and so often you know, they know we're a threat. They know we have the numbers. We have the numbers. They have the big uh, the big media outlets, okay? But we have the people. We have the numbers. And, you know, if we can coalesce enough, we can beat their system uh, and their media and their candidates, okay? If we can just organize and coalesce to the point where we're not eating each other, okay? And we can take a, a, a hint from the right and see how they coalesce behind anybody it, because they, they want to win so damn bad. They, they just, they have that. We have too much pride on it, I think, and we just need to take a cue from them. Look at them. They're coalescing around their candidates. They want to win. They want to beat us. We need to take that mm -hmm. cue. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. Well said. All righty. Well, thanks for joining us here, and I think that does it. Anything else, Dave? I think we're about done there, Josh. Okay, excellent. Well, again, thanks for joining us here with Progressive Talk, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.